Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are so excited to have our next guest here joining us today. They are both executive coaches and really offer an amazing program as business counselors at Ace Coaching Company. Excited to introduce to you both Dina Redinger and Sharon Weinstein here today to talk about Ace Coaching and what they do. So welcome to the show. First and foremost, how are you? We're great. Yeah, absolutely great great today. It's a beautiful day. Oh my goodness. And you're based out of, is it Springfield, Missouri? I'm in Springfield Springfield, and I'm in the Washington DC area. And where are you with that magnificent background? It looks very familiar. It is New York, but it's not, yeah, that's not my real background, but yes, we (laughs) are in New York, but pleasure to have you both here and excited to get started to talk a little bit about obviously the work you're doing. Let me start off with Dina. I have your notes up here first. So I know you're the CEO of Ace Coaching Company, president of Zoom and Grooming. And of course you say no owner of Diagnostic Think with Sharon Einstein. So tell us a little bit about your yourself to start? Yeah, so um, I have a healthcare background, about 35 years, um, walked out um, and started Ace Coaching Company, but focusing on companies that don't merge well. Talked about that the last time, I think, on a podcast and, and just how challenging it is to make sure that the culture gets right because success of companies really depends on the culture of the company after that acquisition. And then just you know, charging forward, Sharon and I are co-owners of Diagnostic yeah. Think, and we found that owners and CEOs and even just individuals really have a hard time solving the right problem at the right time. So we have a process, a diagnostic design thinking process that allows you to do just that by honing in what are you trying to solve right now? Because there's so many things that get in our way of success in our head, our background, how we were even raised really does affect how we lead. So from there, Sharon and I wrote two books. So I'm going to let Sharon yes. talk about our books. Congratulations on that sure. as well. By Thank the way, you. you're the partner of Diagnostic Think LLC, co-author, Healing Healthcare, Evidence-Based Strategies to Mend Our Broken System, and the CEO, okay. SMW Group LLC. So welcome Correct. to the show. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I too have a healthcare background. Again, the same as Dina, about four decades or so. My background is in clinical nursing. So I've spent a lot of time in the clinical space, a lot of time globally as well, directing the Office of International Affairs for a 5,000 hospital alliance. I found a lot of the same things that Dina has found to be true. And we met when we were co-coaches for an organization known as the Healthcare Business Women's Association. What we have learned in our process is that just as Dina said, people get stuck. We're there to help them get unstuck and we do that through this process before we wrote our current book we also wrote a book called think differently 18 strategies to fix broken thinking amazing and where can we find this book the think differently book is on amazon uh-huh selling healthcare we are thrilled to announce yes. will be released for sale on october 22nd but pre-orders are being taken at healbrokenhealthcare.com i'll put it in the chat Perfect. And we also have a YouTube channel. We're taking pre-orders, but it will be on Amazon. It will be on Goodreads. It will be in Barnes and Noble. It will be everywhere. Congratulations. And this is a book that we must get into the hands of people in the healthcare space. Well, let's because- begin by talking more about it for sure. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jill, you know, as other people have identified problems, we know there are problems. There are challenges yep. in getting through the healthcare systems mm-hmm. today. It's workforce, it's workplace, it's environments that are not psychologically safe, it's mm-hmm. it's incivility. There are so mm-hmm. many issues mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that basically really encompass beyond the healthcare space, but into corporate America, into pharmacy, into everything. What right. we have done based on our nurse leader listening tour is accumulate golden mm-hmm. nuggets of information that then led us to to partnering with these brilliant professionals yeah. to actually create evidence-based solutions. And that's where we are. Back to you, Dina. Yeah, it was really interesting, Jill. Um, we started a couple of years ago and we just started interviewing nurses. And we just, we sat back and said, oh my gosh, the world really does need to know what these solutions are. And so we figured, Sharon and I figured up in 20 years from now, if we don't fix broken healthcare, there will be nobody to take care of us because the nurses are leaving in growth. They need reasons to stay. So going back to the combination, you know, we think that, you know, health healthcare leaders in general need to make sure that you're 
creating an environment of wellness and safety to make sure that that culture of that healthcare system stays. And just like we did with the diagnostic think book, you know, um, it's really solving that right problem at the right time. So um, yeah, we're really excited to get this book out because we have the answers. The answers are there. We just need the book Mm -hmm. in the hands of people who can make a difference. Right. Beautiful. I know it's, you mentioned the book's filled with solutions, action steps, strategies to fix this broken healthcare system. And it's divided into three distinct sections, right? Do you want to just tell me a little bit about those? Go ahead, Sharon. Sure. The sections are workforce, which is tantamount to everything that we do. Mm-hmm. If we have no workforce, as Dina said, there will be no one to care for any of us. And think about this, Jill. Today's emerging nurses, the future cadre of nurses, yep. are currently in middle school. Wow. That's a long wait to find someone who's <laughs> eligible to be able to care for any of us. So we have workforce, we have well-being, which is also critical. Mm-hmm. I also sit on a task force for the Academy of Nursing. And one of the things that we look at is why can't there be a well-being representative on every shift in every hospital in this country so that the people who work evenings or the nighttime 12-hour shifts mm-hmm. have resources other than junk food and energy drinks. There has to be well-being to get people engaged. And then the last section, we label wisdom. And it's wisdom from those who have been there and done that and learned lessons along the way that we can now translate into evidence-based practice. Perfect. Well, we are excited that you both are here and we're going to focus more on the soon to be released book, again, Healing Healthcare and the impact it can have on the healthcare space and beyond. Uh, Also, um, I know there's so much more to you both. And do you guys want to share a little bit about your background each? I mean, I know you were an athlete, uh, Dina, right? And how you (laughs) discovered, how did you even get into the healthcare field? And I would love to know the same uh, about you. Get your backstory, Sharon, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Go for it, Dina. All right. So, you know, I, I, one of the things I think that just makes me who I am is, is especially I think as, as a young girl growing up in that space where there really wasn't any place for us to be an athlete. So it was right before women's athletics came into place. And so things were really not set. And I wanted to, you know, run mm-hmm. on that track team with the boys because I was a very good runner. And uh, so I had to go and ask this coach to let me run on this track team. And of course, wasn't well received. But we, I got more received over time just because of the success of what I brought to the team. So for me, it kind of set that stage of, you know, if you want something, you need to ask for it, number one. You got to work hard for it, number two. Um, and then just kind of translated into my opportunity, went into nuclear medicine. I did that for 10 years um, and then had an opportunity in a pharmaceutical industry. And I worked there for 25, launched a lot of products, led a lot of teams, went through a lot of mergers and acquisitions where you could really sit back and see the feel of, okay, we went through that. I made it through all of them until 2015, where that piece that I was managing in the oncology got um, sold on over to another company. And so I think that age plus service gave me an opportunity to retire. And that's where I started AIDS coaching company. And I really wanted to focus on companies. So the first company that I actually coached was uh, the largest women-owned oil business here oh, in the wow. state of Missouri. They went from a $1 billion company to a $2 billion company. So I did their mergers and acquisitions. And what I did is I focused on getting a team of people, interviewing all of their managers, figuring out who they trusted as a peer. And then we made a, a group of people, about 17 people who came in and we worked on three key strategies. You know, How do we want to look? Mm-hmm. What are they going to take forward? But it's making your people within the company responsible for the culture and the company they desire and they want. So we put two companies together. They worked together, said it was the best merger acquisition that they'd had in the company of, of it's been over 50 years that they had been in business, but they have a lot of companies. So they've seen us many times and it really was something that was very successful and found that the key to any mergers and acquisition is retention of your people. So they only lost one person during that first, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. six months, which is really key and critical to any company that's going through a merger and acquisition, because you've got to keep people involved. You'd have to keep people accountable for the things that they want, because really leaders are so busy working on the due diligence of a company. They're focusing on getting things done from a financial end. Many times it's the people part that gets missed. If people can just get the people part right, then everything else kind of falls in place. So for me, I went and got my executive MBA and I started coaching executive women. And and I actually designed 
the diagnostic thinking process for us mm -hmm. and that we use in our book, Think Differently. And those mm -hmm. are specifically around people who have had experiences, how to overcome really big challenges, taking strategies from that book. That book is actually a workbook and a culmination of my work and Sharon's work with what we did with Healthcare Business Women's Association. So fast forward, you know, that's where we wrote Here we are. Healing Healthcare, right? Yeah, and Sharon and I just had so much in common because how we saw business, how we saw culture, how we saw people and we're very, you know, hardworking, straightforward talking women. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. It is what it is. No. <laughs> so that's, that's my true. background. That's kind of what brought me here. So I'm a franchise owner. I own a mobile grooming business here in Springfield, Missouri, and also uh, working closely with Sharon and trying to get this book launched off and in the hands of healthcare. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Did you want to share a little bit of your background before sure. we continue? And I was <laughs> not an athlete. Gosh, Dina neither was I, but amazing. I, okay. <laughs> okay. I was not an athlete. I grew up in a dysfunctional, abusive family, struggled with self-doubt and concealed my inner struggles, afraid to reveal my true self. I never really knew that I could do anything until I mastered the art of quick adaptation, clear communication, strategic decision-making in the face of pressure and I started to think outside the box and the restrictions that were placed on me because I had been told to learn to type. I'd never amount to a damn thing. And I mastered resilience. I too, again, in the clinical space, had my career in the infusion space and became within several years of practicing the president of the Infusion Nursing Society, the chair of their certification board. I was able to teach in 14 countries and in every state and province. And quite frankly, I've been in that space and in that place for a very, very long time. I think that overcoming limiting beliefs and multiple relocations and working abroad and burnout all led me to the moment that if I didn't get a life, I wouldn't have one. And that was the start of my own company. But I will tell you that although I said I was not an athlete, I learned to swim at age 26 after I had three kids. I learned to play lady soccer at age 35 and played for eight years in Florida and in Texas. And I learned to play golf at age 50. So a late bloomer, but definitely successful once I decided to get started. Uh, wow. Well, thank you for, and I want to know that the, how the two of you first originally met. I, I, can I hear that story? <laughs> yeah. well, sure. Go ahead, Dina. Well, ahead. we both are, we both joined Healthcare Business Women's Association and we met each other during the crisis of the pandemic crisis. And so we were assigned different um, companies that we could help coach through Healthcare Business Women's Association. And uh, we were coaching a, a company, a very, very large company um, on one of the coasts of the United States. And uh, Sharon happened to be one of my coaches that we had a group of coaches with all of us together. And we just, we found this, this it, like I said, this incredible insight that we saw things just the same. And this mm -hmm. particular company, just a quick story, was really struggling with their mergers and acquisitions. And you can just probably tell that the companies were almost like, you know, you've got one that's a, the ugly stepchild and then you got the people who actually own the company and nobody was really wanting to collaborate. And so what Sharon and I did, you know, we came up with, we used diagnostic design thinking with a small group of people within that um, leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and we designed them uh, to go and really work with finance, the cost of a decision of non-collaboration and how much it was costing them a day. Wow. And so we found that they were losing $2 million a, a day, day because they cannot talk to each other. And so we presented that to leadership. Finance went with us. We were there supporting this group of people within the company, went to the CEO and shared that um, nobody did anything with it. And guess what? 80% left. Wow. That's and what happened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that it, is what happens. Yeah. 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 So it's it's really around leadership, really listening to what people are are trying to tell you, and they're really trying to work hard to create a change, and they just yeah. you know, just couldn't get anybody to um, listen. So yeah. Well, did you guys want to share a little bit about who um, you know mentored you in a sense, and how you got your start? It's always good to hear more of the background story. <laughs> Go ahead, Sharon. Sure. I've been really lucky to have several mentors. I was, I was thrilled, as a matter of fact, to have people who actually gave me a chance. And what I didn't mention was that I'm also a professional speaker in addition to being a coach mm -hmm. and the past president of the National Speakers Association, D.C., 
and currently on the Global Speakers Federation Equivalence Committee for the entire Global Speakers Federation. What I found was that I found my voice, and that's why I brought that up. It took me a long time to do that, to understand that I could be heard. So the mentors I've had in my professional life, one was an accountant who hired me at age 14 to balance books for his clients, who at that time, where it looked like every small bar in the city of Philadelphia, and all of the receivables were in shoeboxes. My job was to balance those books, and I had no idea what receivables were, but I did it. Another one was a surgeon who trusted me to innovate healthcare concepts that dealt with the intravenous drugs that were used for safety and outcomes in resuscitation. And I worked on that for a really long time, hence my interest in infusion therapy and drug-drug interactions. And finally, a pharmacist, a PharmD, who introduced me to the infusion therapy space, who gave me a chance because he saw that I was good at what I did. He wanted to start an IV team, and we did that in multiple hospitals throughout the country. Those were my mentors. I, I will also mention that my husband has also been a mentor because mm -hmm. when I married him after a blind date 10 days earlier, and I said, hey, I'm not working Wednesday. Do you want to get married? What I realized was that he would be my ultimate mentor. He's the one who gave me the courage to go back to school, to complete a master's degree, to complete a doc, um, a, a, uh, I'm sorry, a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree and to continue to do things because he believed in me and said that I could. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And would you like to share something too? Sure. So um, really, I think it, it took me a while because I always felt like I, I was on a kind of an island. I always felt like as a woman, I had to be better, do more, you know, be seen. And it was probably in my, um, I would say almost late 30s where, you know, I finally just started asking for what I wanted. And I went, I would, what I would do is I would go to these big meetings in this mm -hmm. big pharmaceutical company, which I absolutely love the company that I worked for GlaxoSmithKline for 25 years. And I would try to map out, you know, where's the big guys, where are they sitting? You know, as soon as we break, I'm going to bolt up front. I'm going to find this guy. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to grab my panel and say, I really want to do this. Will you help me get there? And um, I had, I had him help me. So that, that was kind of the, the breaking of the ice where I just figured out, you know what, all you really have to do, you really have to work hard for what you want. You want to be a high performer, but you also have to ask for what you want. So truly it was an RVP who said, you know what, I'll make it happen. And as soon as he said that it was like two weeks later, I was asked to go to home office. <laughs> I'm like, you better say yes. So that's what happened right. for me. Yes. But Dean is right. If you don't ask, you don't get Jill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't so ask, true. the answer will always, always be no. Oh, my goodness. It's so true. All right. Well, let's continue. We only have five more minutes left in the show. So I want to make sure we're covering everything for today that's important to you with healing health care. What else did you want to make sure that your listeners and viewers are aware of for today? So we want to make sure that the listeners know that if you're any place close to this location where we're going to launch. And so can you give that location, Sharon, for us? I know yeah, that's in Vienna, Virginia. Yeah. And if you'd like an invitation to that, my email address is right in the chat, and I'd be happy to do that. We're serving dinner. It's an ah. evening launch from 6 to 8 p.m. We'll have a panel of authors and an opportunity to do a book signing and to learn more about the book, yes. about the message, yes. and about the solutions, because that's really what it's all about. It's right. about those evidence-based solutions. And our, our premise is that basically, if you take one idea from the book, and pilot it within your organization, you're going to see immediate change. And that will spur you to perhaps adopt some of those other solutions mm -hmm. and really yeah. transform the healthcare system, yep. who we are and what we do. Yep, yep. So I so that location, better. it is November the 14th. I don't know okay. if you gave the date, Dina. Oh. It's November the 14th. Mm -hmm. yep. It's at 1604 Spring Hill Road in Vienna, Virginia on the second floor. And I will put it in the chat. Perfect. Yes. And what we want to ask of the listeners is please, you know, if you know anybody in healthcare, please buy them the book because it's inspiring to, for anyone, whether you're a leader, you're a healthcare worker, or even sometimes, even if you're in a company, because they're, they're applicable to a lot of different things. Cause it is about yeah. culture. It's about culture and how do you do that? So that's what we really want to stress is just, just really just get the book or come to the launch uh, um, on the 14th of November. Exactly. So, and if you'll just let me know in advance, I'll put you on the list and we'll make sure that we have enough food to feed everyone. Oh, that too is you. a concern. 
That is so sweet. Oh, my goodness. Well, also, uh, before we go today, uh, let's uh, also I'd love to find out, um, you know, some words of inspiration um, and quotes. I know you guys both have some in your notes here. Who wants to take that one first? Tina, go ahead. Oh, my gosh. Um, I am totally just blanked on what I gave you. <laughs> okay. Say. Well, let's see. I could pull up right now. Uh, I have up. Um, actually, have... it's Sharon. So Sharon, you want okay. to go first? Yeah. Sure. I'd be happy case. to go first. Go ahead. So my favorite statement, and I learned this from realizing that if I continued to work 100 hours a week, three countries a week, I would have no life. And so to me, no is a complete sentence. And it's okay to say no. A good no gives you time to say yes to those things that are really, really important to you. And then another quote that I like, that one happens to be mine, but another one is from Eleanor Roosevelt. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And, and finally, it's one that, my, that inspired my 12-year-old son when he was in the National Spelling Bee. And I've always kept this front and center as well. Wow. And it's by Walter Wintel, and it's called Thinking, the man, but okay. in this case, the woman who thinks she can, or they who think they can. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, it is Ooh. almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out in the world, we find success begins with one's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Because life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man or woman. But sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks they can. Beautiful. And I believe you gave us a quote from Jeremiah 29.11. It was for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a yes. future. Thank you very much. You're yes. welcome. That's beautiful. And I'm so sorry we are out of time. I know we got a late start and I hope next time we fix this problem, we make sure we're on time and whichever uh, Eastern Standard, Central Standard time we should be. So I apologize for the the, the issue no <laughs> at hand, but I'm so happy that you both are here joining us today and made this happen. Yeah. One more time, tell us how we can contact you before we go. Yeah, so you can contact my Dina Redinger, phone number 314-550-2477, or my email is Dina, D-I-N-A, at aceace, coaching, co.com, and then Sharon? Sure, Sharon Weinstein. I'm at in the eastern area. My number is 240-204-2435. My email is Sharon at Group llc.com and i look forward to hearing from you about that launch date beautiful yes. thank you both again for being here excited uh, thank for you this, and Thanks, we appreciate Jill. your time you have a fantastic day and looking you forward too. to chatting again next week thank you thank bye you bye. take care bye-bye are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.